Ukrainians instead of doing the event, the whole event at Truman. Peter Bull fled a life of war and poverty in southern Sudan to live in the United States. His new life in Chicago, hometown of U.S. President Barack Obama, gives him a perspective on what a democratic vote might mean to the people in his homeland. You talking about southern Sudan, we have never had election. And so people are even not aware about how this is going to happen. Uh, so transferring election to southern Sudan, I think it's going to be hard to implement. Former President Jimmy Carter shares Peter Bull's concerns. The nonprofit Carter Center in Atlanta, Georgia, will monitor the upcoming elections. Is Sudan ready for elections? A lot of people are doubtful about it, and we don't have any assurance of it. Former U.S. Special Envoy to Sudan, Ambassador Richard Williamson, has his own doubts. You do not have the prerequisites for a credible election because there's not freedom of the press or right to assembly. Pressure on Sudan from the United States and other countries led to the 2005 Comprehensive Peace Agreement, or CPA, between the government in Khartoum and rebels in the south. Sudanese expatriate Malawal Awak explains that in addition to the elections, the CPA calls for a referendum on southern Sudan's independence. It was spelled out clearly that after six years interim period, the Sudan will go into an election, both a parliamentary election and a presidential election. And then 2011 will be a referendum for Southern Sudanese to decide whether they could be a part of the unified Sudan or they could become an independent entity. Elections this spring would pave the way for a vote on Southern Sudan's independence. But many Sudanese are skeptical the country's leader, President Omar al-Bashir, would allow the South to separate if he remains president. <laughs> president Bashir is at the center of international concerns over Sudan's election legitimacy. The International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant for Mr. Bashir on charges of crimes against humanity related to the ongoing violence in Darfur. He has stood defiant against the indictment and, says Ambassador Williamson, is looking at the upcoming elections as a way to stay in power. One would suspect that President al-Bashir uh, once an election, hopes that it overwhelmingly supports his re-election so he can try to reclaim some of the legitimacy he's lost. I think that the best way to address it, regardless of the charges against al-Bashir or anything else, in Darfur and the rest of Sudan, is to let them have an honest and fair election and therefore bring peace. President Obama says the violence in Darfur amounts to genocide, and it has increasingly isolated President Bashir from the international community. The inability of foreign governments to influence the Sudanese government to stop the violence also has led to concerns about the manner in which President Bashir's government will conduct the upcoming elections. So the concerns are there's a pattern of delay, denial, and refusing to uh, live up to commitments. So if you have that history, uh, with the government of Khartoum, you obviously have serious questions. Those serious questions linger in the mind of Peter Bull. There's insecurity now all about southern Sudan. There's still war in Darfur, in western Sudan, so how are you going to have the election anyway when these things are going on? The election is currently scheduled for April 11th. The Comprehensive Peace Agreement stipulates the elections were to be held no later than July 2009. The current date could further delay the planned January 2011 vote on the future of Southern Sudan. Kane Fairbot, VOA News, Chicago, Illinois.